So it is currently, let me check the phone. It is 7.13 right now, and we are about to head on to the gym. I'm going to the U of H rec center to work out with my friend. Um, today is gonna be like a power building type of day, so I'm gonna take you guys through that. But before I get onto the road to go to the rec center at U of H, let me show you guys what I've been working on. So these are a pair of vans that I'm working on for a client. Look at that, man. So I got Ichigo on the side. Ichigo is from that show Bleach. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's like a, it's like an anime show. It's, it's like, it's an anime show, okay? So that's that's on one side. And I haven't checked out Dragon Ball Super yet, but I did draw the blue version of Goku. I think it's called like Super Saiyan God or something like that. I'm not sure, but yeah, Goku is blue. It kind of threw me off making it just because I've never seen like Goku with blue hair today. Uh, blue hair before, but yeah, these are coming out really good. So we got Ichigo on the side right over here, and then we got blue Goku. Then we also have, I'm drawing the flash on the side and kind of like, you know, making the lightning streaks kind of like trickle all over the shoe. But today's back and bicep, we're gonna be deadlifting heavy. We're gonna be deadlifting, we're gonna be deadlifting pretty heavy today. I don't know why I can say that. We're gonna be deadlifting pretty heavy today. And we're just gonna go inside the rec center and get it. I can't, there's Gabe calling me right now. What's up, bro? You're, I'm like vlogging, I'm like vlogging as, uh, what up, bro? as you call me. Are you already there? Uh, yeah, I'm just getting here. Okay, I'm gonna be there in like the next 15 minutes-ish. I'll be there soon. I'll be there. Yeah, I'll that, bro. Gabe was like, bro, you haven't left yet? <laughs> okay, all right. Let me get my keys and stuff. Then head on out. I'll see you guys at the gym. Okay, so I literally spent 20 minutes sprinting because I thought that, like, Gabe was getting dressed. But he's been here for like 20 minutes. 20 minutes, baby. 20 minutes. So I, it's like I wasted so much energy sprinting. So I'm like, where's Gabe at? I'm like, it's taking a long time for him to change. I snapped him. I'm like, yo. Do you need help changing down there? But he's been up here for like 20 minutes. So we got deadlifting over here. Still warming up. Oh, 315. Then we're gonna build up to maybe, maybe four or five plates. I don't have any chalk, so I can't like grip it. And I think my limit without chalk is like five plates. Like I think that's the limit I could grip it with. So we'll see. So I was trying to explain something about deadlifting, but unfortunately the audio got messed up because my friend, who will remain nameless, had his hand covered on the speaker. So basically what I was trying to explain is that I see a lot of people making this one common mistake and that is allowing their chest to kind of face them around whenever they're deadlifting and that causes a rounding of the back. So what I was explaining is that you need to keep your chest up and kind of rotate your shoulders back, which is gonna allow you to keep your back tight and flex your lats. A lot of people do not flex their lats whenever they deadlift. They think deadlifting is just kind of a pulling motion when you rip the bar off the ground, but you need to make sure you flex your lats and stay tight because that's gonna engage your back more and it's gonna allow you to pull more weight. Once again, you want to keep your chest up, rotate your shoulders back, keep your lats tight, and then pull the weight off the ground. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Making fun of a purple. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm messing with Gabe because Gabe like kind of injured his he injured your groin, right? Your groin? Yeah. He injured your groin? Yeah, so Gabe <laughs> Gabe injured his muscle. <laughs> <laughs> he injured his groin so he can't get his low on squat, so I'm like I'm messing with him. I mean he's he's obviously hitting depth, but I'm messing with him. I'm like, nah, it's high bro, it's high bro. And I rack he racks and he's like, wait, was it was it really high? Your face, he looks all concerned, man. What you doing over there, bro? <laughs> what you doing? Okay, so as you guys can see, these bars have no knurling. Like, there's no grip on here. So, unfortunately, I cannot, like, grip the bar as much as I possibly can. So, it's like, I'm just kind of, like, going off of just pure grip strength. I don't have any chalk. There's no way to get, like, a solid grip on the bar. So, I'm, able to, I'm only able to do 495 and maybe three reps at a time before my grip just completely gives out. So, we're going to do, like, maybe two or three more sets 
and then start my actual back and bicep workout. Okay, so one of the major keys for powerlifting is making sure you're resting in between each set. Like I'm taking like taking like three to five minutes in between each set, just kind of chilling. But like whenever you're powerlifting, you want to make sure that you're rested, so you're able to give each set as much as you possibly can. So we're going for the last set. I'm not gonna do another set. I mean like. I mean, I'm going to do another set, but I'm not going to do like four sets just because like it's I, I have nothing to grip the bar with There's no point in just keep going with this, but uh, yeah last set of three Because that's as many reps I could do without the bar slipping out of my hand. Let's get it. Wait, Let's say that again? Let's get it Y'all, look at this epic, look at this epic jug of water, man. There's puppies all over it. <laughs> okay, guys, so we're starting the back workout. So it's like we kind of already did a heavy compound movement when we did that deadlifting. But whenever I'm doing power building, I make that automatic switch. I act like I did not power lift. I move straight to body building. So what we're doing right now is pre-exhaustion. So we're doing isolation work with the last. So we're kind of we're going to exhaust the last a little bit just so like whenever we move on to the next heavy compound movement, we're going to feel a lot more in our back. So we're starting off with the cable, straight bar pullovers. So... <laughs> I'm like exhausted because we've done like three sets, but what we're gonna do is kind of like I'll show you guys. So I'll put it back. And you guys can see, got a nice stretch already. Hold it down. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Pull it down. Stretch. Pull it down. So, like, once again, we did the pre-exhaustion, so my back is kind of already burnt out, but it's like now when I'm doing the compound movements, I feel a lot more in my lats. Next, we're moving on to some barbell rows, so it's double overhand grip. So, all right, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, so double overhand grip, and what you're trying to, you're trying to focus on keeping your chest up, and your back kind of, your back really tight like this. So I'm going to show you guys what it looks tip about bodybuilding you want to you want to decrease the amount of time you have in between sets like for problems you want to increase the amount of time you have in between sets just because you want to rest and get as much strength as possible but whenever you're bodybuilding you want to keep the intensity up so you're keeping the intensity up you're keeping the pump going you want to rest in between too much sets because what's going to happen is you're going to run out of you're going to run your pump's going to go away the whole point of bodybuilding is to get that pump so right now we're working out and it's like he's going then immediately after i'm going so we've done about like what five sets by now yeah and on five sets we got like one or two more sets left so it's like fast pace Hey guys, yeah. so whenever you like work out, you want to like work your striations and like you really want to focus on your striations and like today we're working striations, so it's striation day, let's get it. So now we're moving on to some dumbbell pullovers, so like whenever you're doing dumbbell pullovers, what you want to kind of focus on is opening up your rib cage and try and get wide. I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. Okay guys, so now we're moving on to lat pull downs. So basically like, 
some people like you don't want to keep your your arms all the way out. You want to kind of bring it into where it's like 90 degrees. Get a slight lean. He's a big dude. What? That's a big dude. So one last tip I forgot to say is that um, when you're pulling, try to act like your hands are hooks. Like you don't want to try to grip the uh, grip the bar too tight. But act like your hands are hooks and act like you're kind of pulling with your elbows. So don't kind of take your thumbs out of the equation. Don't grip it with your full hand. Kind of hook it, like hook grip, and then just pull. You don't want to use too much momentum. You don't want to like swing like that. This one kind of stay tight. Just like that. Woo. That bump was ridiculous. Yo, make that face you made again. Yo, Gabe looks in the mirror and he's like, bro, what? Yo, you're looking really vascular right now, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay, so. We're finishing up this workout with some biceps. All right, I'm jumping back in with commentary to finish up this final exercise for this back and bicep workout. So whenever you're working out back, you really, really fatigue your biceps because your biceps are assisting muscle when it comes to doing pulling movements. So we only did one bicep exercise for this entire workout and that was seated alternating dumbbell curls and we did the seated because this takes away the swinging motion or any possible momentum that you would have if you were standing so we did about two sets of failure that's all we really needed because we kind of really burnt out on back which caused our biceps to be fatigued so that ended up being the last exercise for this back and bicep workout Okay guys, so we just finished up with the workout. I'm currently waiting for Gabe to go get his stuff out of the locker room. But overall, man, just had a really, 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 really solid workout. I just wanted to bring you guys into what a power building day looks like for me. So basically, I focus on the heavy compound movements with my powerlifting, and I kind of call it the powerlifting portion of the workout. So that's when I'm focusing on like deadlifting, or squats, or uh, bench. So when I'm doing the heavy lifting, once again, I'm taking time in between sets. I'm lifting like a normal power lifter. But then, when I finish that up, I move on to the bodybuilding portion of the workout. When I'm doing the bodybuilding portion of the workout, there's more sets, the intensity is higher, I'm sweating a lot more, less rest in between sets, and I'm just really getting after it. And that's what we did today. So like, whenever I have a powerlifting day, or, or a power building day, that's when I'm combining my powerlifting and my bodybuilding. I have deadlift, I had deadlifting today, for example, right? So the deadlifting kind of feeds into the back workout because whenever you're deadlifting, you're using your lats, you're using your back. And so, in conjunction with the deadlifting, we worked out my back, we did lats, we did biceps, just a little bit of biceps, but uh, yeah, ended up being a really good day. Why you walk like that though? <laughs> Alright man, I'll see you later. Let's do an awkward um, camera goodbye. Alright, I love you. Too. <laughs> All right, I love you. Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> Man, I feel so bad, but I forgot to kind of introduce Gabe to the channel. I mean, I feel like I have before, but it was like a little bit, you know, a little bit a while back. But yeah, Gabe is like, we, we were on the same powerlifting team. And basically, like, I powerlift with Gabe. So there's some days, you know, I'm powerlifting by myself, but I really like to powerlift with Gabe just because it's good vibes and he really pushes me to my limits. So Gabe kind of constructs my peaking cycle whenever it's time for me to lift. So whenever I'm about to go, and do a competition or I'm about to do a powerlifting meet, I make sure that Gabe is the one that's controlling my numbers. Gabe is the one that's making sure that my numbers are where it needs to be. It's funny because I, you know, I obviously make programs for people, but sometimes you need someone else to tell you what to do. Cause like, it, it's one thing to understand what you need to do, but it's another thing to have someone have that precedent for you, have that standard for you, having them telling you what to do. And it kind of holds you to a different standard because you have to report to somebody. But yeah, Gabe is that person. I'm just gonna say that Gabe is basically my coach. Gabe is basically my friend coach, my coach friend. He's my friend that coaches me for my power lifting stuff. Made it back to the crib, it is currently 10 o'clock. I think this is a good spot to end the video. There's not much else left to do except take a shower, get a post-workout meal and finish up the shoes I showed you guys early in the video. Yeah, huh. hope you guys were able to take some of this video. Hope you guys were able to make some gains because I know, I know, I think I, I provided some pretty good tips in order to grow your back, in order to make your back a little bit better and showing you guys how I go about my power building days. I think I might make this like a little mini series. Like I'll, I'll drop videos here and there. Like I think I'll call it Power Building 101. I think that'll be part of the title whenever I make this video. Yeah, I think it should be. So Power Building 101 back day is complete. 
Now, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like always, if you like this video, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Get better today. I'm out.